Hello and welcome. First we will start by seeing why I did this video, ok? Why this video? And next we will do the code for get file path, get file binary from the database and a second version just for fun of get file path, ok? So, the context. Well, previously I did a video about download file, ok? Then we passed to get file from SQL server using ADO.net. This is another video. And now this is the version of the same video ADO.net but with entity framework, ok? In these videos we get the file path from the database so we can get the file from the system and we get the file binary from the database, ok? Also in this video we will get the file path a second version where I will try to do the same thing with entity framework but without using system.link. And another important thing to say is I already have a video about uploading the file, ok? Also I have another video about ADO.net where we save the file in the database and also with entity framework. Because of this video I already set up the entity framework configurations, I use database first and we have here two entities, file locations and files. So, because of this video I will not do the configurations here, ok? Because you can find it here. I will do some stuff, different stuff, ok? So you can learn a little more about entity framework but configurations is in this video. So, get the file path is very easy. We just need to create a proj web api entities object, then we need to access file locations and finally we need to get the file path from the right object. Here in hello world we will work in file downloading controller, ok? And we have here the original action method is actually is a dummy action method it will not get anything from the database ok and we have two regions the first one is the ado.net and the second one is the entity framework region ok i just copied these action methods and i paste here ok and we have here the three options and we will work here Ok, we expand these and inside I have this new region where I say new code is here where we will do our code. So the first thing that we need to do for this to get the file path is we already have this variable, ok? So we say using var context is equals to new proj web api entities just that. Then we say file path is equals to context dot file locations dot where x dot id is equals to the provided id, ok? And we want to get the first or default. The default can be null, ok? If it is not found it will be null. So because of that we have to say question mark ok and dot file path. This question mark means that if this, the result of this is null, it will never call this property, ok? Is just that. So the code for this is just this. And we can compare with the previous method from ADO.net, ok? And if we go here to get file 1, you will see that we have a lot of things. We have a connection string, we have a query, um, we have to open a connection and create a command and add parameters, open the connection and execute and close the connection and a lot of things. So the code with entity framework is very very simple and very clean. Okay, where do you think that entity framework will get the connection string? This thing. Well, if we go here to the Solution Explorer and if Entity Framework is new for you, there is a file here, web.config, and if we go a little down, down, we have here a section where it says Entity Framework, and we have here some data, ok? And something that is important, after this we have here a connection strings, ok? This is the connection string. So when I configured Entity framework. Entity framework just created this connection string here, ok? So it can log in into the database, ok? 
okay now we will get the file binary and the operations are very similar we need to create a proj web api entities object again and we need to access the files so we can get the right file okay and get the name and the binary of that file now let's do the second method get file to entity framework this one will get the binary of the file and the name of the file because the code is almost the same thing let's go here because i'm lazy and i will copy this okay and go to the method and new code and just paste i can remove these and here we need to find the file name and the file bytes okay so we say var file we need a file right so we say context.files dot where x dot id is equals to the provided id the provided id okay this parameter after this we say first or default remember it can be null so if it can be null we say if file is different from null we say that the file name is equals to file dot name and file bytes are equals to file dot file bin if you go to compare with the ado.net we needed to get the size of the file so we could make the mat to get the binary of the file okay but in this case entity framework simplifies a lot of our work okay so the get file binary is just this now it's time to do the second version of get file path okay and we will pretend that we don't have access to system.link okay it's just that so we will create a query and then we need to somehow make entity framework execute that query and finally get the results and now we will do the final action method okay and we are not allowed to use system.link why i like to do these kind of things because in between we have to learn new stuff okay so first we need to do a query so we declare here var query is equals to select everything from file location where id is equals to the at id is just is next we need to find a way using entity framework to execute the query so we will using a var context that is equals to new proj web api entities right and we need to declare the parameters for the query this parameter the id so we say var parameter is equals to new sql parameter we say that it's called at id and we say that it is the parameter id of this action method okay and next we need to execute the query so we say for task file location is equals to await context dot file locations dot sql query we provide the query and we provide the parameter just like this then we say first or default async we are not using link okay this is saying that we have a problem because we have this await okay so we must go to the top to the signature of the function and say that this function is actually a async function because async functions don't return nothing we must say that this is a task of http response message we go down again and we are asking something to the database so we are here executing something now we can get the value of the path so we say file path is equals to task file lock dot file path is just that because this can be null we can say here a question mark if this is null this is not executed okay actually we can do this in another way let me comment these and let us say that we want to assign to file path the value of await context dot database dot sql query and this will return a string in this case we can say this okay and we pass a query let's call this query 2 okay and parameter after this we say first or default async again this query 2 will be something that will ask 
directly for the file path. So we go up and we say here that the query to is equals to select file path from file location where id is equals to what is at id variable. Okay, so we have this query that is direct query. Okay, we can get the file path directly. In this case, we have a file location object, and in this case, we have a string. Okay, so we say here SQL query of string, we pass the query to, and the parameter is just that. Okay, in this case, we cannot say this, we cannot say that this is a string. Okay, and now we can test this. We go here and we run, we go to this page and we click here and we are downloading something here and here and we download the picture of the dog. Okay. And this is the end. Don't forget that you can download the source code. The link is in the description and give it a like, please. And as always, thank you for watching.